Okay. Hi on, good evening. Uh, yeah, uh, today I'm going to talk on uh, good, like good fats and bad fats both. Actually, I'm not prepared much, but I will be going because uh, it is, uh, I took a topic in the afternoon, what to talk, I was in totally confusion. But afternoon I started, uh, okay. Sometimes if you know more also, it gets difficult to tell what to tell and what not to tell. Yeah. Uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so today I'm going just because of the festival season, I wanted to talk on the fats and it is a lot of myths is going on like uh, being a safer side. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit on the good fats and the bad fats. And generally, I will talk uh, what are the things, how to use and all. See, uh, we need everything in a balanced way. Don't cut everything suddenly and don't increase everything suddenly. It is not, if sometime what happens, we come to know somewhere uh, we need a lot of go good fats. Suddenly, we start adding on coconut oil, oil, avocado oil, a lot of things. It does, our body doesn't work in that way. And uh, sometimes we, what happens, our body, we come to know that we should not eat uh, one spoon of oil, we should take a per day. Suddenly, we cut everything from the diet. That also our body will not, digestion, digestive issues will be starting happening. So we should be eating in the balanced way. So I will talk a few things. See, good fats, we need, uh, usually previously, nowadays people are get aware, fats also needed. Uh, previously, it was there like fat we don't want. There should not be taken in the fat, especially in a fat loss. Fat loss thing, we don't weight loss thing. We don't want uh, no need to take a fats. But um, recent research and proven that for a fat loss, you need a fat, but a good fats. But how much quantity now? That is also getting a reversed because people are starting eating it too much and it is getting a, against the body. So it has to be in a balanced way. So there are what are good fats and bad fats. The few, few uh, practically what are the things I will let you know that I don't go into a scientific level. The good fats are like cod liver oil, avocado. Uh, which is avocado not only a good fat, it is also rich in vitamin E. The problem with Indian thing is like everything we cook, every oil. Uh, I just I wanted to share one example. I was doing a consultation one month, one and a half month back. Uh, I told uh, oil usage and all. They told, no worry, I, we are using olive oil in all the food. And then I asked them, how you are using the olive oil. We even fry the, uh, our whatever frying also we do in olive oil. Then it is too danger. Better you use a normal oil. See, all cooking uh, Indian culture, we used all, we heat the oil. Olive oil, avocado oil is not good for, of course, avocado some extent you can heat, but olive oil not. So avocado, especially it has a vitamin E. It doesn't, if you think like I will boil it, I will steam it and then I will, I'm getting vitamin E and also good fat. No, vitamin V e is where it goes off with the heat. So uh, make it, you should be a balance so you can use in a dressing because it is very costly avocado oil. Because nowadays everywhere the fashion, I'm using olive oil, I'm using avocado oil, but you should be a, you, using it bed in a proper way. So costly for thing. And butter is good, but it has to be a organic. It has to be a non-GMO. It has to be a non-processed and uh, non-injected. See, if you are, if you think the butter is staying for six, seven months with, in the your fridge, then it is natural or how much it is processed, you only need to think on it. See, when I prepare it in home, it doesn't stay more than a 15, 20 days. Of course, in a fridge, I can keep for 15, 20 days. More than that, it's gets a smell so a lot of preservatives they will be adding so use a fresh uh, butter that will give you a lot of benefits it doesn't mean uh, butter is good then we start using everything whatever amul butter that butter no you have to be used a fresh and it should be a grass fed a cow and it should be a2 cow these things has to be a considered and uh, uh, and see, and, and this butter is very good in omega three as well as CLA. CLA is like you, call, you most of the time you see in on the oils. It is like a, it helps CLA helps in the usually it, uh, helps in the metabolism. Whatever you you might know that ghee, 
usually what in our indian culture on rice we eat ghee on roti we eat ghee why that culture is that that helps for metabolism that has a cla impact so that's the reason you have to include the fat it doesn't mean you have to dip in a fat you have to uh, apply a little bit on everything that helps in the metabolism and it should be a good fat and it is non processed fat ghee, ghee is the best even a lactose intolerant sometimes butter milk uh, these things uh, which are intolerant but ghee will not be coming in a lactose intolerance that much high ghee is considered very good it is one of the it is considered as a medicine also so you can give you can even give to the lactose intolerance people also the ghee and the olive oil uh, as i told olive oil is good but you should not be a uh, heating it and uh, our indian cooking is like tadka no you should not use you should use on a dressings as like um, salad dressings it is very good one spoon of olive oil will be a uh, helpful in your uh, lunch one spoon if you black coffee you can add an olive oil that will also cut your good bad fat and uh, melts helps it helps to melt your bad fat from your body and it also olive oil has lot of benefits it keeps you active and uh, it doesn't allow to crave much olive oil or all the good fats and uh, bad fats like um, if you see lot of soya bean rice bran these all soy um, uh, corn oil canola oil cotton seed oil and one more thing in india most is sunflower oil used uh, whatever sunflower oil if you see if you to go and buy the sunflower seeds how much it cost i think neel knows better see uh, but uh, one uh, one liter uh, sunflower oil cost you 90 rupees imagine how much seeds like 50 60 rupees you are getting only 200 gram of seeds 90 rupees how you are getting one liter of oil sunflower oil man it's impossible to get so what they do first of all filtered and refined oil you should not touch at all it should not be in your home refined and filtered oil i wanted to repeat it some people think refined is good some people think filter is good both are very bad so you should not bring it in the home and uh, example sunflower oil in a coal i always use our like i use my common sense whenever i'm buying the oil see groundnut if it is a uh, uh, 120 160 rupees i am getting a groundnut to only how i get oil in 120 rupees that is impossible so if you in home also if you cold press there are so many machines that are coming in 1 kg uh, groundnut will give me only 500 g less than a 500 half liter of oil so how it is possible think on that sunflower oil i wanted to tell because i have in our uh, like north karnataka it has been done most of the time what they use here the cotton production is more so cotton has a seeds so those cotton seed oil is mixed with the sunflower oil so cotton seeds are useless so they use that way and it is it is not at all good it is very bad it, i wanted to tell that cotton seed oil is also not good for health so in sunflower indian oils all the this are filtered processed oils they add a cotton seed oil so that both the things because cotton seed oil is not harmful but in uh, it while eating sad, 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 but it is, will be a slow poison so like that and even like uh, uh, this mayonnaise people think it is very good no that is also fat is considered but it is very bad fat and uh, uh, fast foods this margarine oil these all things are very bad and good oils then what to use in indian culture without oil is not good we have to especially in the festivals so use only cold pressed oil always prefer if you if you small uh, tire to city and all you can see lot of there are cold pressed uh, small uh, places are where you can take uh, ground nuts you can take sunflower you can take safflower you can take flax seeds this you yourself you can uh, cold press it and bring it so this safflower sunflower sunflower is good but it is if it is a cold pressed ground nut flax seeds sesame oil is too good it is like um, uh, actually in uh, other countries they prepare tahini means like a ground um, what uh, we use uh, this on the 
peanut butter like a peanut butter we use right like that they use a sesame seed oil um, tahini which on the any dressings like that they use sesame seed oil is very good nuts like almond oil and all it's good but in a, every and it doesn't mean these are good you need to use in a you no know, cold pressed oil you can use but in a day you can use maximum in like a, for a one person 200 gram one month it has to it is recommended so like that if you are a four people in the home maximum 1 liter is in a per month that is to be recommended so these are the things and visible i wanted to talk on the visible facts generally i am talking today i not made much notes but uh, whatever the important thing i wanted to deliver i wanted to because it helps for your clients questions to handle because many people come and ask me can i use this oil can i use that oil so always make sure to give them whatever their region is there like example if the north karnataka people ask them to use a groundnut oil but it should be closed for cold pressed safflower oil which is the which is in bangalore area we won't get much usually it is very less but it is very good uh, in uh, north karnataka it is called as kusbi and uh, flaxseed oil it is very expensive but it is very good so you can use when actually when you bring a cold pressed oil automatically will use less because it is too expensive if you take groundnut oil it comes around 350 for a liter so automatically we will use oil less so use only cold pressed oils and um, north india sesame oil or a mustard oil but it has to be in a limited so like that if uh, uh, like coastal region coconut oils these are recommended best one of the good fat is considered as a coconut oil which is very good ghee and coconut oil are the best to use for a cooking see example coconut oil everybody will not like if you ask north kannada people they don't like a coconut oil so tell them a ghee so if a coastal region they enjoy the coconut oil so give them a coconut oil so these two things are the basic you, you can ask them to use it regularly so and uh, there are two fats visible fats and invisible fats usually always we think avoid uh, like whenever i add a, put a more ghee on any uh, guest they come that no no i don't want i am on a dieting or i don't, i don't want to increase the weight when because the ghee we can see it is a visible fat we think we will avoid whichever visible fats we try to avoid but invisible fats are there are so many things we eat like uh, uh, like we think one biscuit just one biscuit we can eat see one biscuit is um, gives you around um, example two biscuits contains 8 gram of uh, fats it not only 8 gram of fats but uh, it sugar additives are there there are a lot of preservatives sugar is the one more i don't want to go into depth of it so 8 gram of fat in one one biscuit you 4 gram but one spoon he uh, gives you around um, uh, almost you can take in a daily basis 15 to 20 gram you can take four spoon four to five spoon of ghee so one spoon give you around 4 gram of ghee maximum and it is it does, it contains lot of hormone in like uh, ghee activates your hormones so understand not only the fat is associated it associated with lot of things it helps in our metabolism and all so invisible fats are like your, your cakes your biscuits your all fried items your chips even we think like example uh, groundnuts uh, we bring from outside that is just a roasted but if it is outside one they roast with a lot of oil so uh, that also contains a lot of fats and one pizza slice gives you a 20 gram of fat one pizza slice gives you a 20 gram of fat but we five spoons ghee to eat we think we are increasing weight but one pizza slice we eat like one pizza nobody eats now one slice they eat four to five slices so imagine so you can eat four spoon to five spoon of ghee per day aram se no issues but one pizza slice not only gives you of 20 gram of fat but along with that lot of only thing how you are preparing it also matters and uh, invisible fats like uh, uh, it comes from two good fats also like egg contains a invisible fats that is good nuts like almonds contain invisible fats that is also good and seeds like our sunflower pumpkin seeds flax seeds this also but 
in invisible fats there are bad like cake biscuits trans fats and all and visible fats are butter ghee and these all things oils which cold pressed oils these things you need to maintain and um, there are two fats like um, omega 3 and omega 6 which are everybody knows most of here and uh, i wanted to talk few things usually everybody tell how much the ratio can you tell anybody how much how the ratio we need of omega 3 and omega 6 anybody has an idea to how much ratio we need to eat omega 3 and omega 6 so i was used to think like uh, 1 is to 4 is normal yeah 1 uh, is to 4 is normal but 1 is to 4 is the maximum so 1 is to 1 is the normal i was a mag we already considered which is maximum is normal understand like 1 is to 4 is the maximum which has to cross but in india we crossed uh, goes around 1 is to 40 actually in the if you the indian if you research has shown that one sometime most of them are 200 up to 200 also so but bad fats are up to 200 good fats are just in a one ratio so it has to be in a one is to one but maximum can be got up to one is to four and uh, there are omega 9 also but our body produces itself so we no need of omega 9 much and um, and there there most good fats are from polyunsaturated because nowadays most of them are with coming with the scientific names on the uh, packet so i wanted to tell polyunsaturated fats are good like walnut sesame seeds and these all things trans fats totally even if a half spoon of trans fat goes into your body it creates lot of imbalance not only the weight gain your hormone goes into imbalance so you need to avoid the trans fats totally and i wanted to give a importance of omega 3 now so omega 3 is like uh, if you are taking omega 3 it is like your uh, life 99% we used to tell in your face meeting when face to face 99% you will be avoiding your heart issues and all not initially i used to think omega 3 is only for a heart but it is everything it is a basic foundation for omega 3 especially for a vegetarians we have a issue we like um, uh, we think uh, walnuts and flax seed if i eat i'm fine i'm getting a omega 3 no omega 3 uh, you won't be getting from a flax seed and walnuts directly omega uh, because in omega 3 also there are two epa and dha we need a epa and dha form not in a ala form whatever vegetarian omega 3 is there it is in the form of ala ala our body has to convert again into a dha the, uh, again, uh, then into a epa so Uh, if you are taking walnuts and flax seeds it has to be associated few more thing then our body needs to convert into dha so fish oils are directly in the form of epa and dha so that is the difference and very light conversion if you take uh, example flax seeds if you go more than 2 to 3 spoon your body will not your body reverses it your body he, he, heat shoots up so you can't eat more than 3 spoon in 3 sp- in not even 3 spoon 2 spoon you can't eat if you go more than 2 spoon flax seeds not only body heat shoots up but along with that your body will not allow for conversion is very less so you have to go special and ghee is the best usually it is recommended and uh, which it is not in the form of dha epa any ala but anything but omega 3 in vegetarians ghee will helpful to conversion of that and um, most of the dha and epa presence in uh, fishes only so uh, like usually we think fish produces the omega epa and dha but fish doesn't produces fish when eats the plants like uh, whatever the water plants are there water plants ab- eats microalgae in the whatever and only the uh, cold uh, like uh, cold uh, water fishes only has a good amount of uh, epa and dha cold water cold water means like usually islands that by, um, greenland that area so there is the algae production is more microalgae microalgae is the highest amount of omega 3 that microalgae is eaten up by the this phytoplankton in the oceans that phytoplankton is given again to the uh, that eaten by the fish like that the fish will be high in the omega 3 so uh, even like if you think like uh, 
in nearby area we whatever fishes are there they are good in omega 3 no because uh, you won't get that much good algae in our area that uh, near to whatever we stay and uh, what are the benefits of the omega 3 is like everybody know heart it is very good it helps in the bp because the blood circulation will be a very good so your bp control will be there and uh, always make sure whenever that they are taking a bp tablet omega 3 give other than that and uh, whenever they are taking a blood thinners check with the doctor and give only when they are taking a blood thinners and uh, i give a blood thinners other than that different time and um, helps uh, like uh, what omega 3 does it increases the hdl because nowadays everybody are taking a reports like uh, hdl ldl triglycerides and all hdl when you increase ldl goes down so hdl to how you will be increasing that by omega 3 and um, keep like it helps to platelets uh, clumping of the platelets will not happen so that uh, it prevents like uh, blood clotting will not happen so that is the one usually now if you see a uh, uh, like a sciatic pain and other blood clotting issues you can give a omega 3 omega 3 prevents helps in the plaques that is like plague in the arteries so it uh, leads like it doesn't help to harden the arteries so it has it helps to prevent the heart attack and it is a anti inflammatory that is a known thing which is the that's why it is must product for everybody anti inflammatory is that's why blood vessels will be a normal heart problem will not be coming it is very good for a mental health so how it, it has been proven that uh, omega 3 helps a lot if you if the baby within a birth one year the omega 3 rich if we give then uh, baby will not face the diabetic issues heart issues and uh, depression issue within one year that much because the brain formation within a one year is high so omega 3 essential building blocks for the brain one structure and and the membrane and very important for the nerves it helps for the memory and it shows like um, even it has been proven that like uh, improves the brain functions uh, like uh, it 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 immediately travels into the brain cells like um, in brain you know like 70% is our fat only so uh, omega 3 directly travels into the brain cells and it works on the uh, like uh, interact directly to the mood related uh, hormones so whenever omega 3 mood related like nowadays pcos issues pcod they have lot of mood uh, mood fluctuations and all um, omega 3 helps in that and uh, it is anti inflammatory that's why it helps into a relieve the depression and all and all alzheimer issues and all you can suggest the omega 3 and it is very good for the immunity how it is like it helps in the b cells and the t cells formations uh, like uh, b cells and t cells are a fighting cells for whenever the infection comes b cells and t cells helps for the fighting it acts it with we are told it is as a fighting cells so omega 3 helps to uh, when we regularly consume uh, consume the omega 3 these b cells and t cells goes up that's why uh, it is anti uh, the, it helps in the immunity uh, it is it helps in both the adaptive and innate like even for uh, uh, both the immunity and it controls like autoimmune diseases if you usually what happens people when they get the autoimmune diseases they start taking omega 3 more if you before that if you omega 3 is high in your diet then you will not face the autoimmune diseases and uh, um, it is very good for a skin and hairs and it's against like uh, it protects against the harmful ultraviolet and uva and uvb rays so it is very if your skin is sensitive that it reduces the sensitivity of the skin and your dryness of the skin most of the time this psoriasis and eczema these all issues are reason of dryness of the skin so when you give omega 3 the dryness of the skin will be reduced so it helps in wound healing why wound healing because it is anti inflammatory so there are a lot of things are there and what, who, what are the fishes which have high omega 3 salmon sardin mackerel and tuna and these are the few fishes and uh, just check people think now oh i am eating fish don't give me a fish oil whichever uh, supplement 
but ask them which fish they are taking and uh, in vegetarian walnuts flax seeds brussels sprouts avocado and uh, these are the things which are high in uh, uh, omega 3 so along with that i wanted to suggest that whenever if you are suggesting for a cholesterol garlic plays a important role green tea plays a important role natural bee plays a important role so if you like these are the things which you can suggest and uh, always understand first to lose the weight to lose the fat we need to correct our health don't suddenly jump on the weight loss or the fat loss first correct their health then work automatically the fat loss and weight loss will happen and uh, when have we when we take a good fats our hormones works properly so that when hormones works hormones is what insulin is one of the hormone a major weight loss happen when you like if more than 10 kg then insulin is high so you need to reduce the insulin how insulin can be reduced only by Uh, like uh, you balancing the hormones so how to balance you need little amount of good fats so always come ghee like example in the dinner our culture has told that one spoon of ghee in the dinner if you take you will have a very good sleep so why because ghee gives a good fat which has works on the hormones and when your hormones are then your your body calms down so you get a good sleep even when uh, we, before we sleep we uh, we tell them to rub with the ghee they see ghee the food the reason is it activates the hormones it relaxes the nerves it relaxes the muscles so good fats the, the power of fat, good fat is too good but we need to use which one usually we think like sometimes imagine the fats like uh, this cheese is uh, considered uh, like usually we think understand how it is it is production is happening how it is cheese are good but how they are processed in india if you see the process uh, how the cheese is processed then if you go for a germany then i can say okay take a good um, cheese no issue but in india if you are taking a cheese you are more than a good fat you are taking a lot of chemicals so understand when ghee you can prepare and enjoy that one and lot of things are there always balance the life like eating window take a properly sleeping window fasting workouts stress free because uh, like one person today message me she was very emotional because of actor uh, the today's thing and uh, she said me even though they are so much maintaining their health and uh, why it is like heart attacks happen it because it doesn't related only through the workout people think if i do nine heavy workouts any anyway, i'm balancing my structure my figure is fine then i will not have any issues see it is not only your body structure or thing your internal thing matters a lot so eating pattern 80% your nutrition matters a lot sleep matters a lot stress matters a lot only workout will not work so you have to tell your clients all these things then along with the fats and understand may you first you understand the good fats and bad fats then um, you can suggest to your client that's it and thank you wow that was awesome so let's give her a big round of applause so saying good fat is too good so that's the take away but we need to know what is the good fat so yeah so she was also relating to the incident of uh, canada superstar today so people how that thing right oh he was so fit and what happened but we don't know it is a tip of the iceberg right so the health and nutrition so in depth so there are a lot of things what kinds of things so it is that is the whole reason why we talk about holistic living right that is we this has to be taken into a deep consideration it is not just like okay i go to gym and i build my muscle okay i just have nutrition i eat but what is my stress level the sleep and so many things what rohini covered i think we need to be really proud to be part of this as well i am really proud and we both me and rohini we are so proud that we are part of this wellness community where we learn the holistic way of living all right so thank you so uh, yeah so thank you so much for let's give her one more round of applause for covering in depth i learned so many things today new things <laughs> okay that's great so anybody uh, we will 
invite volunteers and we have uh, Rekha is going to share her CMOS and uh, uh, lead generation and uh, over to Rekha.